used by the Holy Spirit to convict the world of sin, to show them the, the contrast between light and darkness, not just by being good people. I think that, this, that everything's been walking down to this place where if I'm just really a nice guy and I don't talk about Jesus, that's enough. Then people might find out that I go to church and they might get saved. But that's not really the way it works. The way it works is that we put ourselves into a position where we can pass out the antidote to life. I don't ever believe in, in, in coming across as a pompous, look down your nose, minister of the gospel, saying you better turn and burn, kind of perish, fly or cry. You know, it's like, you know, you're going to go to hell, and, and there are some people that take that stand. And there's a whole group of people whom I know who believe that you should teach the law and show them that they're sinners first, and then show them the grace of God. And I, that's logical, but it's not the way that Jesus did it. It's not the way the apostles did it. What they would do is they would come up and proclaim the fact that Jesus Christ was God himself. And that he came into the world to die for sins, and that we're all sinners. And, and, and show the people that are in your audience Yes, you are all sinners, that none of you are righteous enough to enter the kingdom of heaven. This is what we're to do. Convict the world of sin, or convince the world that there is sin. Righteousness and judgment. So the subject of sin concerns the ways of mankind. The subject of righteousness is the revealed truth about God. The subject of judgment is to prepare the world to know that judgment has come and is coming. So Jesus said of sin because they do not believe in you. We know that the only unpardonable sin is to reject the Savior who saves you from sin. It's blaspheming the Holy Spirit. It's to attribute the works of uh, saints to the works of God. To, to harden your heart so greatly that you cannot receive God in your life, and that will destroy you forever. Verse 10 says, Of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and you see me, see me no more. Jesus was con convicted by the Jews and Romans as being an unrighteous man. That's the only way they could really justify him, giving him over to Romans to be uh, executed. However, the fact that he rose from the dead and ascended into heaven reveals that he was the opposite. He was really the only righteous man. Verse 11, of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. We know that he, he is judged but we haven't seen the final decree in that judgment. The ruler of this world is who? Satan. Satan. Prince of the power of the earth, God of this world. The word judgment comes from the Greek word krisis, or judgment, damnation, accusation, condemnation. So of judgment because of the world, the ruler of this world is judged. He says in verse 12, I still have many things to say to you. Or you could read it like this. I would love to say much more. I would love to give you much more. But you cannot bear them now. You can't bear them the things any more than I have given you right now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but what, whatever he hears, he will speak. Just as he said, I only speak the words that my father said. He's saying that the Spirit will not speak under his own authority, but he will speak whatever he hears, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, said Jesus, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. So Jesus still had many things to say to them, to them comfort them, but there was no longer any time, nor were the disciples ready to hear what they would later learn and take to heart. Therefore, Jesus said, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and then declare to you. So when we pray, when, we're, when we are worshiping God, we worship the Father through the Son, by the Spirit. The Spirit doesn't come to the Lord. He didn't come to glorify himself, but he really did come to glorify the Son. This, what we're doing, is all about the Son. It's all about Jesus. It's all about our love for Jesus Christ. And, and by loving Jesus, we love the Father. By loving Jesus, we love the Spirit. But our focal point is the Lord Jesus Christ. And 
He is who we lay our lives upon. So the Spirit will come to complete the work which Jesus began with him. He will not speak of his own authority, just as Jesus only spoke what he heard from the Father and came in authority of the Father. So the Spirit will only say what Jesus would say, or what Jesus does say, and do what Jesus would do, or Jesus is doing through the Spirit. He will also tell them the things to come. These things necessary to know, nothing more, no less. And very importantly, he will glorify me, Jesus said, if you want to buy and declaring that to you. Verse 15, all things that the Father has are mine. This is really interesting. Because he, he speaks of the Father as being as himself being subordinate to the Father. The Father being greater than him. But the truth of the matter is, is that he said, I am my Father on one. All things that the Father have are mine. Therefore I said that he will take up mine and declare it to you. So this simply reveals that the Father and the Son are one. What belongs to the Father belongs to the Son. Therefore the Spirit will also take what belongs to the Father, the Son, and declare it to them. Verse 16, a little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me, because I go to the Father. This is really confusing because he had no idea what was about to go on. But we, in hindsight now, 2,000 years later, know exactly what he's talking about. In a little while, he was going to be taken. He was going to be taken away from them. They would flee. They would run away. And then in a little while, they'll see him. He'll pop up in the very midst of them for 40 days and 40 nights. Because I go to the Father. Then some of his disciples said among themselves, What is this that he says to us a little while and you will not see me? And again a little while and you will see me? And because I go to the Father. So we know that he leaves, he comes back, he leaves again, and he's coming back. They said, therefore, what is this that he says a little while? We do not know what he is saying. Now Jesus knew what they desired to ask him, and he said to them, Are you inquiring among yourselves about what I said a little while? You will not see me, and again a little while, and you will see me? Most assuredly I say to you that you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will see me or hear about me going to the cross and suffering, and you will weep and lament. But the world, the secular world, and those who do not know me and those who despise me will rejoice. And you will be sorrowful, and your sorrow will be turned into joy. <coughs> Showing them that this isn't the end of the line. You're going to suffer, but this isn't the end of the line. And even after he rose again from the dead and he appeared to them, and he sent him to heaven, he gave them instructions as to what would happen, but he had already prepared them for persecution. Therefore, once again, there would be a time when their sorrow would then be turned into joy. As much as I am blessed by God, there's great suffering here. There's a lot of misunderstanding. There's a lot of warfare. There's a lot of, of junk around this whole time. But I know that it's going to increase. And at some point, it's going to reach a peak. And then I'm going to have nothing but exceeding joy when I see the face of my Savior. Whether that comes through my physical body wearing out and becoming diseased, or my heart giving out, or if it comes through the rapture, it doesn't matter. We are all destined, we are all chosen to have great joy and to see the face of our Lord. And it's going to happen very soon. When you blink your eyes and you, you see why people see, say that your life just flies by before your eyes. Because this, is, this life is almost like an illusion. It's all relative to what we see around us. But we are about to escape being finite and live in the infinite. We're about to escape mortality and live as immortals. We're about to escape a world of darkness and a God of this world who is a despicable fallen Akasa angel and see the face of the glorious.